One of the most intriguing vessels that exists in the Stargate mythos comes from the unfortunately short-lived Stargate Universe series. The mysteries of the automated ship called Destiny serve as the basis for much of the show's story as well as the Back to Destiny comic book series, featuring a multinational exploration team that finds themselves stranded on Destiny several billion light years from Earth in a struggle to explore and survive, trying to find a way home. In this video, I'd like to talk about the known history of Destiny as well as a few notable features of the ship's design. Shortly after the creation of the Stargates, early humans called the Ancients discovered an unnatural pattern in cosmic microwave background radiation. From this, they concluded that its presence constituted some kind of message, indicating that a level of order existed to the universe they never thought possible. However, this message was fragmented and unable to be deciphered. As such, over 50 million years ago, these ancients devoted their efforts to the construction of destiny and ships like it, whose purpose was to reassemble these fragments and to complete this message. The first stage of this mission saw the production of several automated ships capable of constructing and seeding stargates throughout the various galaxies they crossed. The destiny was then built and automatically launched from an Earth-based orbital shipyard. However, as was detailed in the Back to Destiny series, due to a malfunction, a small team of engineers was stranded on the ship, unable to leave. As a result, they placed themselves in cryosleep. After its launch, it was Destiny's purpose to follow in the path of the other seeding vessels in order to explore the planets on which stargates had been built. This would assist the Ancients in furthering their knowledge of the universe. Originally, the Ancients had planned to wait for Destiny to travel a significant distance from Earth before they would board it. However, they ultimately abandoned the project as they started working toward Ascension, a process in which they would leave their physical bodies, transforming into beings of pure energy. Because of this, Destiny continued alone on its pre-programmed journey, traversing the stars for tens of millions of years until the arrival of the Tori expedition in 2009. Over time, without a crew to maintain the vessel, Destiny sustained significant damage. Most of this was due to neglect, however some battle damage was also evident as indicated by numerous hull breaches. These hull breaches were automatically sealed off by Destiny's shields, however shield strength is dependent on power levels and the size of the breach. In the event that the shield is not sufficiently able to seal a breach, the bulkheads in such areas would be closed and locked. In combat, Destiny's shields are designed to automatically adjust in an attempt to match the frequency of enemy fire, mitigating the damage taken. This function makes the shields less effective against specific types of energy weapons. However, it provides better general protection overall. This automatic frequency adjustment can be overridden to allow the shields to be set to a specific frequency, providing better protection against specific types of energy weapons. Doing this, however, leaves the ship vulnerable to other types of attacks. Destiny is capable of faster-than-light travel without entering hyperspace by means of an engine array composed of 16 individual units spanning the full width of the ship's stern. This engine seemingly serves both sublight and FTL functions for the vessel. According to Dr. Nicholas Rush, the Stargate aboard Destiny is among the first that were ever created, sharing the same design as those constructed and distributed by seed ships across the universe, and being slightly smaller than its successors. Unlike other Stargates, the entirety of Destiny's gate spins, transitioning between clockwise and counterclockwise, locking in glyphs until the point of origin glyph is locked and the wormhole forms. Destiny Stargate also has the unique feature of being the only known gate with a 9 chevron address, enabling it to establish a connection from anywhere in the universe. Regardless of where the dialing gate is located, Earth is always the point of origin for any connection to Destiny Stargate. While in FTL, Destiny will not appear on the list of prospective addresses that are in the proximity of terrestrial gates. However, in the event that Destiny receives a 9 chevron connection, the vessel will automatically drop out of FTL. Other ships that are securely attached to Destiny are able to travel with it in an FTL jump, given that the shields are also enveloping both ships. 
Destiny's FTL engines must remain active for 4 hours after a jump and inactive for 3 hours after they are disengaged. Any failure to comply with this limitation can result in catastrophic damage to the drive. Destiny possessed an incredibly complex master code based on an advanced ancient DNA sequence. This code is required to be able to access various systems, including navigation and power management. It is not, however, required for basic weapon and shield control. Destiny's reactors are fueled by the collection and storage of stellar material through a series of ram scoops on the underside of each wing. The refueling process is accomplished by the vessel diving into the photosphere of a star, absorbing material during its fly-through. Destiny's shields are usually able to protect it from the intense conditions while allowing matter to pass through to the ram scoops. However, Destiny's protective capabilities begin to falter when attempting to refuel from larger, hotter stars. When scooping from these kinds of stars, the shields are put under a greater strain, and as a result, the vessel is likely to incur some degree of damage. This recharging process is performed automatically by the vessel whenever the power levels fall below a certain threshold. At the time of the events of Stargate Universe, due to its age, Destiny can only access approximately 40% of its originally designed power capacity when recharging, preventing the ship from being able to dial a 9 chevron address. The age of the craft also contributed to power issues throughout the ship, resulting in damage to various systems as others were taxed. Interestingly, during Destiny's recharge cycle, the ship theoretically has access to a limitless amount of power, as during this time, its reserves are replenished just about as quickly as power can be expended. In regards to its weaponry, Destiny possesses a vast array of yellow energy weapons, including a number of double-barreled anti-fighter turrets located across the ship's hull. These turrets are capable of rapid fire and tracking, making them effective at destroying smaller ships. Destiny is also equipped with four larger energy cannons located on the underside of the hull. Unlike the smaller turrets, these cannons are designed for use against larger vessels, such as motherships. One major downside to Destiny's use of these weapons is the fact that they draw power from the shields, diminishing the vessel's defenses. However, this could very well be due to the ship's power transfer issues, stemming from the lack of maintenance and damage that it has sustained over the ages, rather than a design flaw. This ship proved to be an intriguing setting for the Stargate Universe series. Sadly, however, the series ended after only two seasons, with the story eventually being continued through the Back to Destiny comic series. Even still, many fans of the show are left wondering if and how Eli and the crew aboard Destiny would find their way home. But I'm curious to know what you think of Destiny. Are there any elements of this ship that stand out to you? Would you like to see a continuation of the story of Stargate Universe, or perhaps a different story told aboard this ship? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.